Welcome back to this video series on the provider package. In the last video, we completed the code for choosing an avatar image, uploading it to Firebase Storage and showing it inside our app. And in this video, we will make some improvements so that we can make better use of provider and accomplish more with less code. As part of this, we will explore an issue that is very common when we use provider and we navigate to a different route. And we will also discover and address some problems that cause unnecessary widget rebuilds in our app. In summary, in this video, we will learn how to create services that depend on stream values, fix navigation issues when using provider, and minimize widget rebuilds when using stream builder. And by doing all of this, we will get a deeper understanding of provider and see how to use it effectively on more complex applications. And I'm confident that this knowledge will save you a lot of time because you will know how to avoid some potential issues early on as you build your own applications. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. By the way, if you want to code along, you can head over to the GitHub page for this project and you can resume from where we left off in the last video by checking out this branch called Working Implementation. Okay, so let's get started. And if we go to the home page, I can point out one thing, and that is that in order to upload an image file, we're getting the user object with provider of user so that we can pass the user UID to the upload avatar and set avatar reference methods inside our services. And this works. However, as you add features to your apps, you may add more and more methods to your services and it quickly becomes repetitive to retrieve the user just so that we can pass the UID when we call methods with Firestore or other services. However, in this application, we only need to use these services when the user is logged in. And in this scenario, we know that we always have a UID. And this means that we could modify the Firebase storage service and the Firestore service classes to take the user ID as a constructor argument rather than as an input argument to this method. So if we make this change, we no longer need to pass in the user ID when we call these methods, and this can save us a lot of code. However, the Firebase storage service and the Firestore service are created inside the main file, and over here we don't know what the user ID is. So what I'm going to propose is that we move these providers into our alt widget class alongside this provider of user. And by making this change, we will be able to create the services and pass in the UID as a constructor argument. So our next goal is to refactor the service APIs so that they become easier to use. And I'm going to start with the Firebase storage service. And over here, I'm going to add this code. And this way I can pass the UID as a constructor argument. And this means that I no longer need to pass it as an argument to these methods. So I can remove the UID from here and from here and as an argument over here as well. And this code is still valid because the UID that we reference inside this method is now an instance variable for this class. Next, I want to follow the same process for the Firestore service. So over here, I can add this constructor like this, and then I can remove the UID from here and from here as well, like this. And by the way, now that we updated our services, we have some errors in our code base, but we will look at this in a little while. For now, let's go to the old widget. And the first thing that we want to do is to rewrite this code to use a multi-provider like this. And now that we have this, we can head over to the main file and we can cut these two services from here and we can add them over here. And then we can add the required import like this. And now we can pass the UID as a constructor argument because this comes from the user object that is inside this snapshot. Next, we can get back to the home page and here we can update all the method calls to our services. So I can remove the UID argument from here and from here as well. And make sure that this method is called correctly. And as a result, I no longer need to get the user object because my services already hold a reference to the UID. And then I can scroll down to the build user info method and I can make the same change. I can delete this user from here and I no longer need to pass an argument here. Okay, so I can save this file. And by the way, I can see that I also have an error on this about page, which is a widget that we haven't looked at until now. 
and we will see why I added an about page to this project in a little while. But for now, let's scroll down and fix this error by calling this method without a UID argument. And we can remove the user variable as well. Okay, so with this change, our code is now fixed. And once again, I want to point out that the APIs inside the Firebase storage service and the Firestore service are now much easier to use because we no longer need to retrieve the user with provider and pass in the UID every time we call these methods. And we have been able to accomplish this by making these services dependent on the user object that we extract from the on -out state change stream. And this means that these services are only added to the widget tree when there is a signed in user and we show the home page. So this approach works well in our use case and you can structure things in the same way in your own apps as long as you only need to use these services when the user is logged in. Okay, so it looks like our service APIs are now simpler. However, are there any drawbacks in this approach? Well, at this stage we could hot restart the application and if we wanted we could open the about page by pressing on this button and as we can see, this is just a simple page that shows some text. However, I want to point out one problem that happens when we open the about page. And that is that with the current setup, we get some unwanted widget rebuilds when we perform some navigation. And to prove that, I can open the old widget file and here I can add a couple of console logs. So inside the build method, I can add a print like this and also inside the stream builder I can print the connection state of the snapshot like this and then I can open the console and hot reload and as I can see the widget is built once and the stream builder is called twice first with a connection state of waiting and then with a connection state of active and this is normal when working with stream builder because we always get a snapshot before the first stream event is emitted However, if I open and close the about page, I can see that I get an additional call to the stream builder and this happens again and again every time I perform some navigation. So this is interesting, but it's probably not what I want because I don't want navigation events to cause rebuilds inside stream builders that are entirely unrelated. So this is an undesired side effect that we want to avoid. Not only this, but I need to show you another problem that has the same root cause. And if we open the about page, we can see that there are some lines that I have commented out. So if we uncomment this code, we can see that it is used to show the avatar in the same way that we had done in the home page. So if we hot reload now and we try to open the about page like this, we see that we get a red error screen with an error about provider. And in the console log, there is also an error which says could not find the correct provider of Firestore service above this about page widget. And you might think that this doesn't make sense because the provider of Firestore service that we use here is an ancestor of the home page. And in the home page, we have a method that we use to present the about page inside a material page route with a navigator. However, when we perform navigation like this, the about page does not become a child of the home page. And to illustrate what I mean, I can show you this diagram, which represents the current widget tree in our app. And what we have learned before is that widgets can only access providers as long as they are their ancestors. So in this case, the home page can get access to the old service and the image picker service, as well as the user, the Firestore service and the Firebase storage service, because all these services live inside ancestor providers. However, the about page is presented with a navigator and this is contained inside the material app. And what this means is that the about page doesn't have access to all the services inside this multi provider. And this explains why we are getting a red screen. But how can we fix this? Well, one option would be to access the dependencies that we need from the home page and pass them as constructor arguments to the about page so that they can be accessed directly as instance variables rather than by using provider. However, I feel that this kind of defeats the point of using provider for scoped access because it means that we need to write extra code to hook things up when we want to push routes. 
So let's take a deeper look at the problem. And the issue here is that this multi-provider lives inside the old widget, which is a child of the material app. However, if we could find a way to move this multi-provider above the material app, then our problems would go away. And this solution is represented in this diagram. And as we can see here, the about page has access to all the services because all the corresponding providers live above the material app. And in order for this to work, here I have added an old widget builder class, which is responsible for creating this multi provider. And this in turn has the material app as a child. And down here, I still have an old widget, which decides what page to show depending on the authentication state. And the main difference compared to the previous implementation is that in this case, we are splitting the authentication state logic into two separate widgets. At the top, we have an old widget builder, which will contain the stream builder that reads the on auth state changed stream. And this will call a builder with a snapshot of type user that can be used by the old widget to decide which widget to return. So our next goal is to refactor our code so that it matches this widget tree. And as we will see, this will solve two problems in one go because the unwanted widget rebuilds will go away and we will be able to access our services with provider when we do navigation. Okay, so let's get started by creating a new file called old widget builder dot and then we can copy and paste all the code from the previous old widget class and paste it over here. And we're going to rename this class to old widget builder like this. And here we are going to add a builder that will be initialized by the constructor. And this instance variable is a function which is called builder. And it takes two arguments, a build context and an async snapshot of type user. And this function returns a widget. And what we can do with this builder is to call it over here like this and over here like this as well. And also I want to remove this condition that checks the connection state of the snapshot because all these widgets should do is to conditionally create these providers and call the builder. And instead it will be the responsibility of the old widget to check the snapshot and return the appropriate widget. So I'm going to remove this if alongside with the else branch like this. And while I'm here, I want to update this console log to say old widget builder just for consistency. And I also want to add some documentation so that it's clearer what is the purpose of this widget class. So old widget builder is used to create user dependent objects that need to be accessible by all widgets. And this widget should live above material up. And as we will see, we will use this in combination with old widget. So now that this class is complete, we can head back to the main.dart file. And here we want to wrap the material up with an old widget builder. And I can do this in this fashion. I can import this file. And my goal here is to pass this user snapshot object from the builder to the old widget. So let's go ahead and refactor the old widget class as needed. And to speed things up here, I'm going to replace this implementation entirely with this code. And I can clean up the imports as well. And as you can see, old widget now takes a user snapshot as a constructor argument, and it uses it to decide which widget to return. And now that we updated our implementation, we can hot restart the application and open the console again. And as we can see, the stream builder is called twice like it did before. But this time we can open the about page and we can see that not only the avatar loads correctly, but the stream builder is no longer triggered on navigation. And this is because the stream builder now lives above the material app and is not affected by navigation events. So this is great because it means that all descendants of the material app have access to all these services, even the ones that depend on the currently logged in user. And with this approach, all the unwanted widget rebuilds are now gone. And as our applications become bigger, we are likely to have a more complex widget hierarchy over here. But with this architecture, we can make sure that all the services that we need are always accessible via provider, even when we perform navigation. 
So the bottom line here is that keeping all the services above material up has some distinct advantages. And I feel that this is a good thing because service classes are typically shared across the entire app and they are not specific to any given widget. On the other hand, there are cases where we want to create a block or a model class based on change notifier. And this is specific to a given widget. And maybe this widget uses Navigator to push a route with another widget that also needs the same block. But we want the block itself to be accessible only to these two widgets and not the entire app. And in this case, it doesn't make sense for the block to live above the material app. And instead, it might be more appropriate to pass the block directly to the constructor of the second widget. And all of this is to say that the best solution always depends on your specific use case. And once again, as a guideline, I tend to keep generic service classes above the material app so that they are accessible by all widgets. And I try to keep local blocks and models as far down as possible so that they are only accessible to the widgets that need them. So the key takeaway here is to place global shared objects near the top of the widget tree and local objects near the bottom just above the widgets that need them. And depending on what you're trying to do, you can use provider or construction injection to create and access them. In conclusion, in this video, we have seen how to create services that depend on string values. And we have discovered that if you are not careful, this can lead to navigation issues and unwanted widget rebuilds. And we have seen how to solve these problems. Finally, we have discussed where our providers should go in the widget tree, depending on who needs access to them. And I feel that we should now have a deeper understanding of how to use provider effectively as our applications become more complex. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we will learn a few more things about provider.